everybody. Welcome to our first session of Growing Young based on the book, Growing Young, Six Essential Strategies to Help Young People Discover and Love Your Church by Kara Powell, Jake Mulder, and Brad Griffin. Glad you joined me for this. Whether you're a parent or a youth worker in our church or a children's worker or anyone who is interested in or passionate about connecting with young people at First Baptist Church. Thank you for joining us. This is going to be uh, a very enlightening six-week study for all of us, and I hope that you will join us for all six weeks of this study. Uh, this week, we begin with the topic of keychain leadership as one of the essential strategies for growing young and for churches that are growing young. So we'll jump into the study momentarily, but just a couple of things before we begin. First of all, you, you don't have to have the book uh, to participate in this study. It would be helpful. Um, there are areas of the book that I don't have the time to jump into, and so if you ordered the book, it would give you a more complete um, idea of what we're talking about. So, Growing Young, Six Essential Strategies to Help Young People Discover and Love Your Church. Hop on Amazon. Um, you can order that right now and download it to your Kindle. It's also available in hardback, uh, maybe paperback, I'm not sure. Um, but order that. It, it would be helpful for you to have that, but if not, you will still get a lot out of this study. So however you feel led to do that, um, please do so. Um, we're going to be going through six weeks. Um, I'm going to briefly here throw up on the screen what these six weeks will look like. You'll see this circle around Jesus-centered community, which is, of course is the most important aspect of growing uh, you know, young in any church. Um, we begin with keychain leadership tonight. We'll work um, clockwise around that circle. And so you will see the topic for each week that will be included in the email. And that'll just let you know where we're going. Um, one more thing about this study. Um, it's for, it is for growing young in a church, but I also think it's beneficial in other ways. Um, as I read this study, um, I look at it as a really good parenting strategy or study uh, for um, helping your kids grow in the faith. I think that's important. Um, it also just helps us all to know how to better relate to each other, especially to young people. But there's a lot of key factors in here about about empathy and, and being warm to other people and, and being the best neighbors. There, there are so many important qualities in this study that really branch out from the topic of growing young, but they are essential for growing young in the church. So that is the that is where we will be talking about this study. Once again, we're going to use some language that sounds like it's just for church staff or maybe youth Sunday school leaders or children Sunday school leaders. Um, and that's it's certainly going to be beneficial for, for them. But this is really for all of you. If you want to show um, that you care about young people in our church, this is the study for you. And when we talk about leaders, that's not just official leaders. That's anyone who has a position of, of authority or influence in the church or in your household or community towards young people. So once again, this is a big tent study, and I hope that uh, as you join us this week, you'll think about inviting others in. Uh, you'll be uh, doing this study um, in some small groups I've heard, which is great. You may just want to take it and study it on your own. And then one final point um, I want to let you know, if you're looking for a Bible study, this this is not the one. You'll, you'll want to go find one of our other studies that we'll be posting online. This is a topical study, kind of a strategic study about reaching young people and connecting with young people in our church. So if you want a Bible study, this is not the study for you. Of course, there will be biblical implications all over this study, but it is not a Bible study study per se. Okay, so enough uh, talk. Let's go ahead and jump into our first week, which is keychain leadership. Unlocking keychain leadership specifically is one of the strategies and attributes of churches that are growing young. I'll begin with a question. Do you remember your first set of keys? Think back to a time when someone gave you the keys of access or authority or responsibility uh, to something, whether it's in the church or somewhere else, maybe in your home or at your work or school. What was significant about that for you? To receive keys to something and to be valued. What was that like for you, especially think back uh, when you were young? Well, growing young churches, churches that are growing young, demonstrate keychain leadership. And what is keychain leadership? If we think of keys to our church, and not literal keys, although there are literal keys to our church, but if we think of keys as the capabilities 
and the power and the access of leaders that carry the potential to empower young people, keychain leadership churches give out keys to young leaders. Once again, that, that may physically be keys to the church or to some room in the church, but most of the time that has to do with simply empowering our young people. And the study says that if you're willing to entrust your keys to young people, they will trust you with their hearts and their energy and their creativity and, and even their friends. So empowering young people to lead. Congregational members in this growing young study, and once again, this is a study that was conducted across churches of all kinds uh, across the United States. Traditional churches, modern churches, large churches, small churches, churches in all geographic regions, um, uh, long-standing churches, churches that have just been planted. Th this is a wide range uh, of churches, and so they're trying to get at what all of these churches hold in common as far as uh, what it means to connect with young people. But 77% of those surveys, uh, uh, of those surveys, attributed it, attributed the church's effectiveness to the leadership. Now. That leadership, um, we'll have to break that down a little bit because you're probably already thinking, okay, good. So you need a you need a gifted staff or you need a great preacher, and and we'll get there. Uh, but it's much much broader than that. Um, Keychain leadership is important, and that models a posture of giving away access and authority. It is about empowering others and links them to the life of the congregation. So that's also very important for our young people. We often prioritize getting adults involved, which of course is important, but we also need to prioritize giving our keys to young people in our congregations. The study found six attributes of these churches who were doing keychain leadership well. And so we're gonna go through those as kind of the meat of our study today. And I want you to be thinking about that in relation to your role at First Baptist Church. The first attribute of keychain leaders are that keychain leaders are mature. They're not always young. This uh, sort of addresses one of the common misconceptions of churches that are growing young in that, well, young churches, of course, have young leaders across the board. They're exclusively young. So everyone who's on the stage or chancel during worship, they're all young. All of our Bible study teachers are young. All of our committee leaders are young. All of our mission leaders are young. And the survey found that that's actually much less important than having mature leaders who possess some emotional intelligence and maturity. So not all leaders need to be young. In fact, the survey and the data of growing young found that only one in 10 respondents in these churches said that having exclusively young leaders was what made the difference or having young leaders is what made the difference. Um, in fact, most respondents, this includes young people, said that intergenerational leadership was key uh, to their involvement and engagement in church. So it's not about being exclusively young in our leadership, uh, but keychain leaders should be mature. That can be both young and old. And I hate to say it, but that also means that we can have immature leaders who are both young and old. So don't assume um, that uh, if we put young people into our positions of leadership, that that's some, some large group of immature leaders. I have worked with plenty of immature leaders in my relatively short time in ministry, um, immature leaders who are older. Um, yes, of course, there are young leaders who can be immature, but, but do not forget, there, there are older, immature leaders in our congregations. I'm not saying at First Baptist Church, Gainesville. I'm just saying that, that that is not out of the realm of possibility. So we need to find mature leaders regardless of age. Um, so that implies that young people can and should be trusted with leadership in our churches. Another attribute of keychain leaders and keychain leadership churches are that keychain leaders are real. Um, they're not out to be hip or cool or relevant because once again, probably a myth, um, you need to have really cool leaders, really hip leaders to connect with young people. Uh, parishioners when responded, when surveyed about their leaders, 87% um, of them talked about authenticity. Not how cool their leader is, not how hip their leader is, but, but is their leader or are the leaders authentic? Remember that these surveys look for the most common traits of churches that are growing young across different 
um, churches in our in, in the spectrum: young churches, old churches, hip churches, traditional churches. The most consistent answer across all of those churches is that the leaders need to be honest, authentic, and comfortable with themselves. Number three is that keychain leaders are also warm. They're not distant. So, so don't imagine that the leaders of the church need to be uh, you know, sitting up in an ivory tower, up on a hill, uh, sort of looking down on uh, the people of the church. No, keychain leaders, which is critical in a church that's growing young, um, has warm leaders, not those who are distant and sit in closed door meetings, but are warm and accessible. In fact, when young people were asked what made church effective for them, 43% of those who were surveyed pointed to the relational nature of leaders. They were caring and they were accepting and enjoyable to be with. So it's not just staff either. I'm going to keep coming back to that. We want our staff and our ministerial staff, our leaders of the church, our official leaders, so to say, to be accessible. But this also is, is for lay people. Remember, lay people are also valued leaders in our congregation. I would even venture to say that our lay leaders play, play just as important a role, if not a more important role, in, in developing relationships with our young people. And that's an important and critical piece to keep in mind through this study. Um, they studied one church that was 5,000 members. It was an Assembly of God church in in Miami. Uh, and, and, and that church, you would think that it was the charismatic worship or maybe the modern approach to worship, but 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 universally in that church that was considered growing young, it was all about relational warmth from the leadership that, that spread out across the congregation. Virginia Ward said that effective leadership is about much more than just the sage on the stage. Um, I'm not sure I would call myself a sage in any sense of the word, but the point is to say um, is that effective leadership is about more than just the person giving the sermon or more than just the person giving the talk or the person at the very top of the ladder, if we want to phrase it that way. It's about the shared leadership and it's about warmth across all leaders in the congregation. We also learned that keychain leaders know what matters most to people and not just other leaders or other pastors. It is very common for pastors such as myself or my staff to, to listen most to denominational leaders or to read books um, and to say, well, th th this is what this church leader, this church CEO uh, tells us to do in the church. And it's not to say that those voices don't have some impact on the way we lead and we don't need to listen to those voices. But it was most effective for churches who are practicing keychain leadership to know what matters most and to listen to their congregation. So yes, I'm going to be reading denominational blogs and publications and church leadership. I'm going to be listening to church leadership podcasts, but I also need to be listening to you. And that's true of all of our leaders here at the church. We, we listen to our congregation to help us to understand you so that we can know what keys to give away. If this all comes back to sharing leadership, we need to know where we can share leadership with you and how we can get invo get you involved. Number five is that keychain leaders must entrust and empower others and not try to be a super pastor or super minister. This is about the importance of empowering others. This church should have no super pastor. That's, that's me. I should not be a super pastor. But we also shouldn't have super ministers. You don't, you don't need a super uh, children's minister. You don't need a super youth minister. You don't need a super missions minister and so on and so on. Because super ministers or super pastors never share the leadership. Super pastors or super ministers tend to hold on to those keys of leadership, and, and that's very problematic. Now, I'm going to say a, a word of criticism about this because it, it can go both ways. And what I mean by that is, on one hand, pastors and ministers such as myself, we can become tempted to become that super pastor and to hold on to all the power because it's like, well, we're the professionals here. We're going to hold on to those keys because we're the only ones who know how to do it well. So for whatever reason, uh, leaders in the church, pastors, ministers, even committee leaders have a problem giving out keys, and that's problematic. And so from that perspective, pastors, leaders need to be willing to give up those keys and, and to not you know, live into the temptation to become a super minister or super pastor. So that's, that's a word for me uh, and all of our ministers, most certainly. 
But there's also a word for for lay people who are looking for leadership. You know, so many people expect the pastor or the children's minister or the youth minister to to, to grow the youth group or to grow uh, the children's ministry. That's especially true of youth and children's ministry, but but they are not the sole super pastor. So I want to give this word to our lay people who are putting all their eggs in the basket of, well, Jeremy's going to grow our church uh, to be young, or Jenny's going to grow our church to be young, or Brenda's going to grow our church to be young, or Kelly or, or whomever. If you are counting on each one of us individually to do that as though it is our job on our own, we have already failed. This is a shared leadership Strategy. This is about keychain leadership. And so we need you to take the keys from us and lead in areas and not, not hope that we'll become the super pastors that you think we can be because we can't do it. We can go off on a whole other discussion about, about burnout. Um, that's inevitable if we try to take on too much, but that's, that's not even the central part of this conversation. It's important to share leadership with the church. And so you should expect to take on some of the responsibility of growing young in our congregations. I know you do, but I think that's an important reminder for all of us. And then finally, number six, keychain leaders take the long view. Not just short, not just short-sighted, magic bullet kind of steps to grow young, because we we always want the quick fix, don't we? I know I want that. I mean, I, we live in a microwave society, and I think that's even more true for churches who have experienced some decline or some challenge in connecting with young people. As we as we live into that history, we're always thinking, okay, we've lost time. How can we quickly connect with young people? But what this survey found is that keychain leaders and, and churches that value keychain leadership are in it for the long haul. So we're not just looking at short sighted steps in order to grow young, we're looking for consistent long term leadership and long term leadership strategy and, and movements change and culture change and trying to become a church that grows young, it can take time. Any kind of culture change takes time. And so if we believe that there are, there is more that we can do at First Baptist Church and we believe that there's a culture change that needs to happen for us to grow young, we need to understand it's going to take time. Don't expect it to happen in the course of one calendar year. Don't expect us all of a sudden to be a church that is 100% passionate about growing young, if we weren't already, um, in the course of a few months. None of the congregations surveyed reached this point overnight. It's, it's about valuing our young people and establishing keychain leadership over time. So on one hand, I'll say we're not just going to go start giving out keys tomorrow. We need to think strategically about what that looks like. And I'll go ahead and confess, there are some things that can't be delegated quite as well. Just as as a very, you know, um, probably obvious example, can't delegate the preaching week to week. That's what you've called me to do. I I love to share the pulpit. I love to have my associates. And uh, not too long from now, we'll have a youth Sunday where we'll have some of our youth preaching. And I'm, I'm absolutely thrilled to do that. I love doing it. But I also understand that that's not something that we can do every week. All of our staff will have roles that they can't delegate quite as well. We're fully acknowledging that. But there are a lot of roles in the church that we can delegate. Maybe we aren't already delegating. And in order to grow young, we need to become keychain leaders who value the practice of delegation and including others in our leadership. So that's the gist of the first week. Growing young, uh, keychain leadership, churches that are growing young value keychain leadership. I want to leave you with a few questions for you to ponder on your own or to discuss with uh, the group that you're studying with. These will be available as an attachment as well um, with this study, but I'm also going to put them on the screen and you can reflect on these questions as we prepare to close the first week's study. First of all, what's been your personal approach, whether at home or work or church, to giving out keys and sharing leadership? Do you tend to give them out readily, or do you hoard them and hold on to them? Do you keep leadership to yourself? Number two, what observations have you made about the ways that keys are given or held in our congregation? At First Baptist Church, are we good at giving those keys away, or do we tend to hoard those as staff or lay leaders? Are we afraid to give out the keys in our congregation, especially to young people? 
Number three, what might it look like for us to give young people more leadership in our church? What might it look like to give young people these keys? Then finally, what's one area where you personally could share a key with a young person? That could be in your role at First Baptist Church, but it might just also mean in your household or with some young people that you have influence over. What's one area where you could personally share a key with a young person? And that's what we're reflecting on this first week. Keychain leadership, the importance of sharing leadership with our young people and trusting our young people to bring fruitful, creative, inspiring ideas to our congregation. One of the baseline foundations of this book and of this study is that young people bring vitality to our congregations. We don't just want young people in our congregations because, oh, well, well, good. Our, our organization can continue on into the future even after we're gone. No, we need young people to be engaged and involved now because they bring good ideas and inspiration uh, and creativity to our congregations. So I want you to think on that and pray on that as we close this study. Next week, we'll move into a very, very important area of this study about the importance of empathizing with today's young people. This will be a challenging study in week two. In other words, next week, um, because I think empathy is something we don't do very well. I'll just be 100% honest. As a pastor, we have lost, I think, our ability and our, our, our way when it comes to empathizing with anyone in today's society, but especially with young people. So we'll talk about that next week. For now, reflect on keychain leadership. I'm so glad you joined us for our first study. I look forward to seeing you next week as we continue our discussion on growing young in our churches. Have a wonderful week.